Welcome back to Big Mouth and welcome to Sunday's edition of the DCEU Daily. And Joe Kinnaman, Rick Flagg himself, has got into the debate about the air cut. And this is what he's had to say. Remember, you can follow me on Twitter and tag me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. Suicide Squad star wants David air cut because of Jared Leto's Joker. Suicide Squad star Joel Kinnaman expressed his support behind David Air the David Aircut movement because of Jared Leto's Joker. A major element of the 2016 Suicide Squad film that let people down was Jared Leto's Joker, which was highly anticipated after the actor scored an Oscar win. Since the film's theatrical release, David Ayer has been quick to defend his take on the Joker left on the cutting room floor. Leto might be back as the Joker for Zack Snyder's Justice League, but many, including Joel Kinnaman, still wants to see him in that other desirable director's cut. That has been teased. In a recent interview with The Playlist, Joel Kinnaman was asked about David Ayer, the David Ayer cut of Suicide Squad. The star revealed that he would be interested in seeing it because of all the cut scenes featuring Jared Leto's Joker. You always want to see the filmmaker's cut. You know, it's always a shame when the filmmaker's vision doesn't make it to the cinema. Of course, there's always going to be compromise. I find it's the bigger the budget, the bigger the compromise. That's true. Well done, Joe. That's spot on, isn't it? Usually that's the case. I'm sure Air's cut would be much more interesting. David's take on the Joker was really interesting. And that didn't really come out in the movie that we saw. So basically, this is quite kind of interesting because... It, it's this is the synopsis for um, David S. Suicide Squad, and I've never read this before. Should we read it out and see what it says? It feels good to be bad. Assemble a team of the world's most dangerous, in uh, what's that say? Incarcerated supervillains. Provide them with the most powerful arsenal at the government's disposal, and send them off on a mission to defeat an enigmatic, insuperable in entity. U.S. intelligence officer Amanda Waller has determined only a secretly convened group of this. Disparate, despicable individuals with next to nothing to lose will do. However, once they realise they weren't picked to succeed, but chosen for their patent culpability when they inevitably fail, will the Suicide Squad resolve to die trying or decides it's every man for himself? Pretty good, actually. I like that synopsis. I genuinely have never read that before. So it's really good that Joe Kinnaman's got into the conversation. These things can only help the release of the air cut, which I believe an announcement is imminent for. Um, that's my opinion. That's what I'm hearing on the ground. But we will see. Um, we could see a rush situation where we see it before Zack Snyder's Justice League. Again, not very realistic. That's the way I would like to see. Joe Kinnaman has also spoke about James Gunn's The Suicide Squad as he reprises his role in that film as Rick Flagg again. He said this is going to be the biggest R-rated film of all time. He says it's going to be funny, it's going to be fun, and it's going to be more violent than we've ever seen before. It's action-packed. I'm really looking forward to that film. And I would really urge anyone fighting for the air cut, you know, I would caution you not to start trashing James Gunn and his movie. It is not going to win you any friends at WB. It's not going to help your calls, our calls, to get justice for David Ayer and to get his cut released on HBO Max. So watch what you say. Always be positive, And I believe we will get to see that movie. Ray Fisher just can't leave Walter Hamada alone. He's obsessed. This is what he said yesterday. Walter Hamada still owes an apology to those who participated in the Justice League investigation. Accountability over entertainment. Now... It's interesting. I mean, I can live with that. That's not really that controversial, what Ray said. Um, what's interesting to me, his language and dialogue is gone down in tamper. It's less aggressive than it was a couple of weeks ago. So why is that? It's like he's giving Walter Hamada an olive branch. Because as I say, if he's got proof of Walter, you know, tampering with the investigation, why not just release it? Or as I say, is he reading The Art of War? The problem with The Art of War, Ray, it's, it's a book. And in reality, when you're up against a huge studio, it's really difficult. So unless you've got some evidence out there, it's going to be very difficult for you. But I look, if I was Warner Brothers and I was Warner Media, I would get Walter Hamada 
to set up a Twitter account and an Instagram and I'd come out and I'd spin the narrative. Now, I wouldn't deny anything. I'd come out and I'd say, listen, I worked with those people. I believed in those people. I was wrong. The investigation proved me wrong. I I apologize to everyone involved for, uh, you know, for not believing um, what they brought me initially. It was very hard for me. I came in. There was a lot going on. Something along those lines. This is how I would play it. First of all, that's not admitting that he interfered with the investigation, but also it kind of calms the situation down. And it would really put Ray Fisher in a problem because if he really wants to remove Walter Hamada, if Walter comes in and twists the narrative like that, the fans would not the Snyder fans or Snyderverse fans as such. We know they're definitely on Ray's side. Um, my agenda, I will tell you after I read this from at JessXDCFB, because I think this is brilliant what he said. And I agree with this entirely. Mate, I'd rather have Zack Snyderverse than you just get a, a petty apology from someone who had little to do with the situation at a time you require an apology from. Can you not get an apology from Whedon, Whedon or Johns, which would make sense? Well done, Jessex. Very, very well said. The point is, it seems he doesn't want an apology for himself, but the people involved in the investigation. As I say, I've just explained to you how that would work. So well done, Jessex. Um, I agree. I agree with everything you're saying there. Um, here's my agenda. My agenda is not to see Walter Hamada removed. That's not what I want. I like his multiverse strategy idea. I think not just because it helps the DC Extended Universe, as a whole, it unites all the live action universes. It gives potential for crossovers and cameos and, and stuff like that and some really integral stories. It also gives a variety of tones and visions. But if you want the restoration of the Snyderverse, this is the best way forward. Because I assure you, if Hamada goes and if the multiverse strategy goes, your only chance of restoring the Snyderverse, getting the restoration of the Snyderverse back, there's no chance. So removing Walter Hamada is not in your best interest. Now, let me give you some evidence here. Now, in Shazam, in David F. Sandberg's Shazam, we had a lot of Easter eggs for the Snyderverse. Now, this is a film, we all admit, Walter Hamada was the leader. He was DC president at the time. It would have been something he asked Sandberg to do. Sandberg didn't just decide to do this, right? So it shows there, if he was so against Snyder and his verse and his ideas, why did he put those Easter eggs in? Why did he insist on those Easter eggs being in? And I mean, the bullet, the actual bullet from BVS, using that in such a big way as well, the Batarang, he didn't have to do that. It proves that Walter Hamada is actually a friend and not an enemy, and removing him is not in our best interests. Now, if Ray Fisher or even Zach thinks by removing him, Zach's going to ride on his white horse and take over, no. Because there's still people at Warner Brothers Pictures who could put someone in much worse. So we've got to think about, in life, sometimes it's great to be emotional and passionate and have personality. I admire those types of people, but sometimes Intellect, intellect and taking a step back is the best way. And I'll repeat, it is not in any Snyderverse fan's best interests to remove Walter Hamada. I think in terms of Sean O'Connell, the cine cinema blend editor and guy who's doing the um, release, the Snyder Cut book or whatever he's doing. I think I think we'd all admit in the Snyderverse we have maybe a mistrust of Sean some people still like him and embrace him, and some people think he's just in it uh, for his career. But I must admit, this tweet he put out was absolutely fantastic. Arguing over a film or series disrespects Zack and basically states that you prefer what you want instead of what Snyder wants. Zack's choice is all that matters. Release the Snyder Cut, Zack Snyder's Justice League. Well, well done. Well done, Sean. Whatever I think about you and your agenda doesn't matter. At the end of the day, he's spot on. There's these constant hot takes, which we've already discussed in other episodes of the DCEU Daily, where there's people actually now putting petitions out 
to get Zack Snyder's Justice League released in four one-hour episodes. It's ridiculous. I actually saw somebody say it's in everybody's best interest for it to be released in episodes. No, it's not. You are wrong, and Zack's right, and I am right. This was supposed to be a movie, a four-hour movie. It is nothing to do with you. What's the best way to sell the movie? It is zero. Now, I know maybe your agenda is for it to be as successful as possible so Zack can get more. I promise you, the four-hour movie will be just as successful. It will have just as much engagement. In fact, because it's a four-hour movie and it's going to take people longer to get through, they're still going to keep on coming back to the platform. So whether it's episodes or whether it's four hours, it really doesn't matter. You are wrong. It's going to be released as a four-hour movie. And credit to the studio for letting Zack release this film the way that he wants to. But what do you think? Let me know. Would you like to keep to come out in episodes or in a four-hour movie? But I must admit, I don't understand the logic and the obsession with, uh, with this situation. And finally today, it looks like everyone apart from Warner Media is postponing all their movies again. You know, before we go today, and this is not really related to the DC Extended Universe, but it is, isn't it? Because people like Nolan lost their shit because Warner Media broke the release window. As I've always said, they were correct. You see, I watch a lot of TV now because of lockdown, because I'm not able to go out. And I hear a lot of conversations, different opinions about the pandemic and the way it's been handled. And talking about people in lockdown suffering with depression you know, suicidal thoughts. It must be terrible. But listen, the best way in life is to accept your reality. Looking at the past all the time isn't going to help you. So keep on thinking about the good old days, how we used to go out, clubbing, down the pub, you know, how we could go to the movie theatres. One of the things that triggers me is when someone, you know, posts on Twitter, I miss movie theatres. Listen, I love the movie theatre experience as well. But these people are going on another fucking level. These movie theatre Nazis are insane, right? I actually heard someone say on a YouTube video that they'd wait forever to see No Time to Die in a cinema, in a movie theatre. It's insane. Listen to me. COVID-19 is here to stay for a very long time. The world has changed. This is not World War II. We're not hiding in a bunker waiting for air raids. It's actually not so bad. It takes getting used to. We have to wear masks. We have to socially distance. We can't see all our relatives. It is hard. Don't get me wrong. But at the end of the day, the studios postponing these films are wrong. They're postponing them in the hope that when they actually get to show them, they'll make the old billion dollar global box office rollouts. There is no guarantee of that. Absolutely, we do not know when people will go to movie theatres like they did in the good old days. The only way forward is to find another way of making money on this product. Tell me the, tell me the logic in postponing movies and keep making more. They're just going to build up. How do you release them? If this lasts for five years and we get strain upon strains, of this virus, how do we go forward? They have to they have to create a think tank, they have to sit in an office and decide how they can make the most money out of these movies and this content. And if it's a little bit less than they used to be, they're gonna have to suck it up, suck it up. Because constantly postponing these movies, you're just gonna create a build up of content. And then how do you release them all? It's insane. So this just proves again that Warner Media's strategy of breaking the release window is absolutely bang on. It's going to work for them both in profits and consumer um, reaction. I think most of the consumer are kind of smart enough to understand that we're in this kind of COVID situation for the long haul. So I think it would be dumb to keep on postponing stuff. I'm lucky that the other studio stuff doesn't interest me so much. I'm a big Bond fan of, fan of course, but I have seen No Time to Die, and I did a video reacting to it. No spoilers, of course. Go check it out if you can find it on in the mess that is my YouTube library. 
But basically, Warner Brothers is my studio. They do most of the stuff I want to watch. So I'm lucky as a Warner Brothers fan that Warner Media broke the release window. And you should feel lucky if you're a fan of Warner Brothers, you know, um, content too. We're going to get a Godzilla versus Kong trailer this Sunday because it's going to get released because they broke the window. Not only that, they're still pay pay paying everyone what they would have paid in a normal well. That's fantastic. So they understand they have to take the hit for the time being until they find another way of doing things. But for now, movie theatres are not viable. Just accept it. Postponing movies isn't going to work. Comment down below, like, share and subscribe, and I'll be back tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily. See you again soon.